Cool. Right, I can confirm that you are now live. Thank you very much. Good morning, members, officers and members of the public who are viewing this live stream. Welcome to the meeting of the uh, Grants Advisory Committee, 30th of October 2020. My name is Joe Hales, Councillor Joe Hales. I'm the chair of this committee. For information for members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead member for finance. That's the gentleman with the glasses and the beard on your screen, um, Councillor John Williams. Um, applications made under the grants, uh, Council Grants Scheme process. Council Williams then takes his decision uh, into account, our, our decision to account their recommendations. I completely messed that up, so apologies on that one, but you get the drift. Okay, members, can I ask you to mute your microphones? Uh, we're having a bit of bandwidth this morning, so if you need to turn off your camera feeds from everybody else, do that, and then you'll be able to stabilise your connection. And then when you want to speak, the usual method, hand up or put your the, the hand up on the seat on the signal and then you can uh, be called to speak. OK, um, we're going to go for apologies. This is agenda item number one, apologies. I'm going to ask uh, Democratic Services, Aaron Clark, if you could do a roll call for, for us, please, and to make sure that we'd core it. Thanks, uh, Chair. Good morning. Um, I can confirm we've received apologies from Councillor Claire Delderfield this morning, but uh, for the rest of the members, I'll read out your name. Uh, if you could com please confirm that you are present, remembering to unmute your microphone before you speak. Uh, Councillor Donson, please. Uh, yes, present. Councillor Ellington. Yes, good morning. Councillor McDonald. Yes, present, morning. And Councillor Hales, clearly we are aware that you're present. And uh, Councillor John Williams, uh, lead member for finance, if you just confirm your presence as well, please. Good, good morning, present. Confirmed that the meeting is indeed quiet, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, if I might ask officers now, um, if they could just uh, unmute themselves and say hi. Um, I think we, well, I know we've got John and we've got Leslie uh, and Jay. Yeah. Ladies first. Oh, good morning, and Catherine. Leslie Big McFarlane. Good, Catherine. good morning, Leslie McFarlane, um, Development Officer for Health. Um, Catherine Hawkes, Programme Manager within the Sustainable Communities and Wellbeing Team. Jay Clark, Programme Manager, Sustainable Communities and Wellbeing. Uh, John London, North Stowe Development Officer, uh, also doing our community chest and also in the Sustainable Communities team. Thank you. I know in the background we've got a gentleman called Liam Martin, who's our uh, IT specialist, if you like, and he's the he's the officer streaming this meeting. So hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Liam. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Do any members have any uh, declarations of interest with any of the items on the agenda today? We are talking about mobile warden um, schemes and finances. So I think probably as a trustee of the Melbourne mobile warden scheme, I'm going to look to uh, officers to give me a, a, a heads up on this, but I'm going to certainly uh, declare a, a non-pecuniary because I have no financial interest, so to speak. But as I am a trustee, it may develop into something further. Councillor Ellington. Um, I'm a trustee of Swavesea mobile warden scheme. Thank you very much indeed. Um, minutes, members, can we go through the minutes? Would you like to go through them at the, uh, the usual um, page one, page two, etc.? So if you could turn to page one of your uh, your agenda pack, which is uh, agenda item number three, which is the minutes. I'm just going to go through as usual, page one. Yes, please, um, Chairman. Um, I was actually present at the last meeting. It's got me down as absent. My word. Yes. Um, Apologies, that is the wrong Claire that has been marked as absent. I, I, it's, it often happens. Claire Delderfield and Claire Daunton. Yeah, that that often happens. Yeah. We will have to ask one of you to change your name, OK? Oh, uh, well, no, I have the advantage because I have an I in my first name, so it's slightly longer. <laughs> OK, thank you. Right, so other than that, is page one OK? Page two? Page three, page four, page five, and page six, which is just the sign off. Are we happy that I can sign those off as a true record of the meeting, please? Just say aye or wave. 
That's it, that'll do. Thank you very much. Aaron, I think I have a unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, just like to explain how we're going to to manage the uh, the items now. Um, I'm going to call on John in a minute, John London, uh, to introduce the report. Now, this this is going to be agenda item number four, community chest funding applications. Uh, John is the officer doing a lot of the work here, so he'll start to present this. Uh, so if I could uh, hand over to you, John, and we'll go from there. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, three applications uh, this month that makes up one deferral and two new applications, as well as a proposed set of modifications to Appendix B, uh, which you will see the proposed modifications as Appendix C uh, in the pack. As a side note, uh, as you probably noticed, there are less uh, deferrals coming back than have been deferred. Uh, the Orchard Road Community Group application has withdrawn its application and respite holidays are, are planning to submit next month. All of the applications this month have full documentation and all district councillors have been notified. And in fact, with the new process that uh, is being put together, uh, it will be impossible for an application form to be submitted um, in the future without full documentation. And the form will be automatically notifying district councillors when, uh, when an application comes in. The first application is from Milton Colts Football Club. This is a deferral and it is for uh, £1,000 for a Perrot roll cart travelling sprinkler uh, to provide irrigation and allow maintenance actions for the football pitches at North Lodge Milton. Uh, the reason why this was deferred was because we were aware that the landowner was Milton Parish Council and uh, the uh, committee wanted to see whether... You froze. Well, it looks like John has either gone on strike. Near long term leasehold. He's back. Oh. He's gone again. I think he's chair. He's going to have to put his camera off. Yeah. John, if you can hear us, do you want to shut down all your video of us and turn your camera oh, off and just sorry, say, can you hear me now? No, not you, John. John London. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry, John. Too many John. Sorry, sorry. Did, I, did I drop out there? You did, fella. You did. OK, uh, hold on, let me just turn off the um, uh, how do, uh, Aaron, how do I turn off incoming again? Uh, yes, you uh, just uh, find the ellipses, the three dots on your bar, more actions and then turn off incoming video should be at the bottom. Turn off incoming video. OK, fantastic. Um, uh, I will therefore ask you to speak up if you uh, if 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 you miss here, because obviously I cannot see you now. Um, uh, Chair, where did I get up to before I dropped out? You were just going on, uh, just explaining about the the documentation was clear. All the, uh, start again on the Milton. It's oh, easier. Okay, uh, I will start again for Milton Colts Football yeah. Club. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was just that one. Yeah. Which is a deferral, and uh, if this is an application for the part funding of a Perrot roll cart travelling sprinkler, we've got an image of it in the in the pack for you. They've applied for £1,000 out of the uh, 1.4k total project cost. Uh, we have uh, uh, the, the reason why this was deferred is because it, it was clear that the land was owned by Milton Parish Council, but we couldn't determine whether Milton Parish Council put any money forwards for this, as is usually the case. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a slightly more complicated situation. Milton Parish Council has the freehold for the land. It is on a 99 year long term lease to Milton Community Centre, which is an independent charity. However, that independent charity does share a website with Milton Parish Council. The uh, Milton Community Centre has put forward £400 to make up the total project cost of the, uh, the application. We have comments of support from Councillor Judith Ripith. Uh, who has said it's a very strong application and will be of great benefit to the community. It has my full support. Uh, there is no uh, green option um, uh, considerations for this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, this has been to us a past. We've had more information now, I think, from John's comments. Good morning, Councillor Hanley. Thank you very much for coming. 
Aaron, would you mind uh, putting uh, Councillor Hanley down as attending in place of uh, Councillor Daunton, uh, Councillor Delverfield, sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Both, yeah. Members, have we got comments, please? So, so just to clarify with John, John London. Um, so, John, the, la the last time um, the total the total amount was still was fourteen hundred pounds, but now we're clarifying that the four hundred pound is coming from the Milton Community Centre. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. I'm I'm inclined to support it this time round. There's the the explanation about the parish council is here. Um, and this, there is support from the community centre and strong support from Councillor Ripperth. It seems as if it's needed. The explanation of why it's being purchased is good. Um, I, I'm inclined to support it. Thank you, Claire. Sue? I'm in, inclined to support it. I know with our own um, pitch here in Swavesey, it's been venti drained and you need to keep the surface nice and moist, otherwise you get big tunnels that people break their ankles in. So I, I would support. Okay, Peter? Uh, yes, now that we've got the additional information, uh, I think it's fine. And, and finally, Bill, um, did you hear all of the presentation from John London? I know, I literally got in two seconds ago, sorry. Okay. Would you mind then if we just exclude you from the, the vote on this one at the moment? Yeah, of course. Of course, I mean, I, of course. We'll go next uh, from carrying on. Um, yeah. I might take it that we're uh, we're all agreed, except for Bill, that we're going to support this because I, I also support it. Yeah. OK, yeah. thank you, Aaron and John. Would you like to make a note of that? Uh, over to you, uh, uh, John, for number two. Thank you very much, Chair. The next application is a new application from Horningsea Residents Association, which is a community group in Horningsea and they are uh, asking for a grant of £876. This will be for the total cost of two wheelchair accessible picnic benches. These picnic benches are made from recycled materials, so they have considered a green option. They will be going to the uh, Goose Green Village play area, which is owned by Kwai Estates and is on a long term lease to the village uh, via a lease to the parish council. This is an extension to a separate project uh, to upgrade and renovate the Goose, the Goose Green Village play area. So over the last uh, couple of years, they have raised over £34,000 uh, for the renovation of the play area. This includes a grant of well over £5,000 from Horningsea Parish Council. Uh, they have been successful in this, uh, but as a uh, as a sort of an extra cherry on the cake, they thought that they would want to put in some uh, some of these recycled picnic benches, which is outside of the scope of the original project, but will support the community in accessing and enjoying the new play area. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Claire, would you like to go first, since this is your area? I hate to say this, Claire, but you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm on record as supporting this, both the Parish Council and the community group, the Resident Association in Horningsea, have done a lot of work recently fundraising for um, improving play areas. Um, I think this is a good um, application um, and I support it. Thank you. Other members? So, so, I support it in principle. The only comment I would make is that these tables can be extremely difficult for those of us who are of an old age and find it quite difficult to cock our legs over the bench and sit on them. Um, and therefore, although there is access for a wheelchair, those of us who can't get on that sort of bench um, really needs some other form of chair available to replace where the wheelchair is in this picture. But I support the whole principle of, of uh, having those sort of tables. Thank you, Sue. Gentlemen, Bill, would you like to go first on this one? Um, it looks like a worthy, a good application and a worthy cause. And if 
Claire Staunton supporting it, so am I. Thank you. Peter? Uh, yeah, I think they should be congratulated on uh, how much money they've raised. I think that's amazing. Um, the only goose green I knew up until now is in the Falkland Islands, so yeah. I'm pleased to hear this one in Horningsea. Yeah, less troublesome, eh? <laughs> right, OK. Um, in that case, I'm, I'm of the same uh, opinion as colleagues, so uh, that would be a unanimous then, I'll take that. Um, uh, uh, Chairman, uh, might I come back to Councillor Ellington's comment? Um, because I think it's a really valid comment and I don't know whether it's worth passing that back to the HRA. I think it'd be well, very valuable to do so. Yeah. They might want to come back for some more money about it, but um, that's up to them. But I do. I think Sue's made a very good point there. Absolutely. Thank you, Claire. I will include that in my uh, in my letter uh, confirming that their application was successful uh, if and when that 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 comes through after after due process. Thank you, John. Over to you, John, number three, then. Uh, this is the final application. This is also a new application from the first Hardwick Scout Group. Uh, this is the increasingly familiar situation of a piece of land that is owned by the parish council, but then is on a 99 year long term lease to another group. In this case, the leaseholders are the first Hardwick Scout group. This is an application for um, the uh, for a thousand pounds, which is approximately half of the cost of a new fence to go around the Scout Hut. I apologise. I did have a, I did have a, 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 some some better images of of the area in in question, um, but if you wanted to, you can click on the the map of the area uh, on Appendix A and see the area that they're talking about. It's currently a small uh, piece of scrubland which volunteers are clearing and they are going to then fence it in uh, uh, in the hopes that it will be able to be used or that it will be able to be used by various organisations in the village for external children's activities. So it will be used by scouts, brownies, guides and other youth organisations in the village. We have a statement of support from Hardwick Preschool uh, that they would like to use that space for a forest school as well. The application for section 137 funding uh, went into the parish council meeting. That parish council meeting only happened on Tuesday, so I was unable to include its response in the report pack. However, I am happy to report that the parish council will support this application with a grant of £500 towards it. So that means that they have £500 from the parish council. They will be supporting £500 of the cost themselves and are applying to us for the remaining remainder £1,000. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, right. ch Chairman, could I first of all, before we discuss for um, some clarification, please. Um, on the district councillor support, um, the councillors quoted are councillors Khan, Halings and Hunt, but the district councillor for Hardwick is uh, councillor Chamberlain. If uh, I have uh, made a mistake in that, then I am entirely sorry. Um, Easy to do, John, because Khan, Halings and Hunt are the district councillors for Histon, not Hardwick. It is entirely possible that I made uh, an error there. Um, uh, I will get back to you and confirm which particular councillors I have emailed then. Uh, uh, if I have if I have made an error there, then then um, you have my un unrestricted apologies. John, before you go on and and flail yourself anymore, okay? These 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 are easy easy mistakes to make, and that's fine. Um, and if you, you you may be aware that we did speak to Liam at the start of the meeting, as he's the new boy. All blame will be fed towards Liam now, so you can actually offload this one onto Liam, okay? <laughs> right. Even yeah. though he had nothing to do with it, but this is just life, Liam. Right. Yeah, I, okay. I take no liability, as I've already <laughs> said on record. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Right. 
thanks for your 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 openness there, John. It's been that's lovely. Okay, guys, shall we continue to discuss if we wish? Um, who'd like to go first? Shall um, I go first? Shall I go first on this one? Yes. I think it's wonderful. I think this is a, a scouting. I was a scout many moons ago. I think it was back in the dark ages, and uh, I've always been very much of a supporter of the scouting movement. So. That's where I stand and whatever they're going to do to protect their pieces of uh, land and what have you and make it safe for the kids even better. Right, over to you um, guys. Yeah, if um, if I can comment, Chair. I mean, I think um, John, John London answered my question, which is uh, clarifying that it is available for other groups in the village, so uh, yep. I, I'm fine with it. Yeah. So you had your hand up. My only problem with it is it reminds me of the boy in the pyjamas and I just feel it needs to be um, camouflaged somewhat. In pr the principle's great, but I hate the thought of being shut in with a fence like that. Fair enough. Claire, you... Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy with this. I Again, Sue's made a very good point. Um, but I think it's a good application and it will be a, a, a good space for, for um, the young people in Hardwick. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Thank you. The, I, I wonder actually, um, our village college has just had this type of fencing put up just a, an awful lot higher with gates and stuff and it's, it was all to do with safeguarding. It was, um, it was a requirement under the um, the education department, they had to put this up. So I was quite surprised when we saw it because there were public open space where people had access through the college grounds onto other land, which is owned by the parish or, or whatever. And so that now has been cut off with this type of fencing. So it kind of doesn't surprise me that there's, there's that potential issue to this. Bill, may I come to you? Yeah, I um, understand uh, and appreciate uh, Councillor Ellington's comments. Um, of course, as it matures, presumably they will plant shrubs and things in front of it, will describe it, break it up uh, visually. So, no, um, it looks like a, a good application. I'm very happy to support it. OK, so just on the basis of comments, can I just have a, a show of hands? Aaron, you watching, please? So all those in favour of um, supporting it? Peter. Um, against? Abstention. I can't see Sue's hand, sorry. Are you abstaining, Sue? It wasn't there. I would abstain. OK, thank you. So that's a one, two, three, that's four, four, one abstention, please. Thank you, Aaron. Right. John, that's that's it for that, that your, your section now, isn't it? Um, if I may, I would like to very, very briefly go over the uh, modifications. Oh, yes, to sorry, the yeah, appendix, yeah. Yeah, crack on. Yeah. Um, very, very, uh, very, very quickly. Um, the highlighted section in yellow. Uh, there are three very, very brief sections that are changed. The main one is the preferred green options. And this is an entirely new section. This is based around the conversations that were, were had earlier in the year. Uh, this is on page 20 uh, with regards to uh, internal combustion engines and lawn mowers. So the wording that we would like to propose is applications to the community chest to renovate or purchase items that include an internal combustion engine, including accessories, will not normally be considered. For such an application to be considered, evidence must be provided to demonstrate why an electric variant is not being considered. Such evidence should include market research demonstrating that a similar electrically powered variant is not within price range or that due to technical differences, such a unit would not be fit for purpose. In addition to this, there is a section, there is a, a one other addition where we have uh, made uh, a copy of your safeguarding policy is in the required section rather than the required if relevant to the project section. Uh, and whilst it's not particularly appropriate, uh, important, we've also changed the contact details to uh, uh, a different uh, email address. Are we all right? We're OK with that, yeah? Just to, just to note that then, members, yeah? Yes, because it doesn't 
completely preclude no. um, the purchase of a, of a petrol engine vehicle, um, a piece of equipment, if it's if there's no option. So it's not a problem at all. It just makes makes people think electric, doesn't it? It does. Mm. Sue, so, then Claire. I'm just concerned that um, some uh, areas are not within lead length for electrical items and that uh, when especially football pitches and things and it might be quite difficult to have a safe electrical lead that is providing power for um, a, an electric lawnmower for some of, some of these areas. Um, knowing where my village pitch is, it would be impossible. I, I, I take your point, so probably this is where we're heading with this with battery powered. But on, on the other hand, if a, a demonstration, as John read out in the second paragraph, if if, what, if you can demonstrate why you can't use electric uh, over power over fuel, then you just have to make that case. Claire? Um, yeah, it's just a very small point. Um, the email address. Um, it's not you never give out any phone numbers now. Is that the case? If, if somebody needs to have a conversation with an officer, um, they have to email, first of all, to this general email. And just to be reassured that um, somebody is checking on the because there's no phone number, someone is checking on the email on a very regular basis. Uh, I can confirm that I, I check that on a, a regular basis. Uh, my general uh, modus operandi, as it were, is uh, when somebody applies to Community Chest, uh, the first thing they do is they get a phone call from me. Uh, unfortunately, as we are not all in the office at the minute, there is there is the possibility that if, uh, if somebody phones in, uh, it could end up sort of getting lost in the system and a, a phone ringing in the office and nobody picking it up. If somebody does need to contact an officer, they can and have uh, contacted the main switchboard, which have our uh, private mobiles, etc., so that that can then come back to us. And that that system has has worked. OK, thanks for that reassurance. Right, I've got Jay and uh, John Williams. I think perhaps uh, John beat you to it for slightly, Jay. Yes, sir. John. Yes, you're unmuted. Um, I, I'm unmuted now. Sorry about that. I couldn't unmute. Um, can we make sure that we get Tom to do some comms on this, please? Because I think this is a really good, um, you know, um, change to to our rules. Um, it shows how important it is, how how important going green is for this council, and to get our communities to take that on board. So, can we make sure, um, Liam or, or or yeah, to to contact Tom and and get this um, you know get this communicated on social media? Thanks. Yeah, thanks. You can take your hand down, please, John. Jay, where you go? Um, yeah, I'm happy to take that forward John I think it's probably a good time to do some comms around uh, community chest anyway obviously we've got quite a lot of funding left this year and I know a lot of groups haven't been able to meet because of Covid but I think at the same time we go out about the, the green stuff maybe we just do a little comms thing around community chest um, and the other thing I wanted to say just in response to Councillor Daunton just we, we're not uh, excluding email addresses uh, phone numbers um, we do still have phone numbers. We have a community central phone number and we do send out our phone numbers on our email signatures. A lot of us have changed those to our mobiles. Um, yeah, so it's just I think it's just this appendix that doesn't have a number on it and we can probably just add the uh, community's number onto it. Might be the most sensible fix for this. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you very much, uh, John London, for the um, the work on that, and Jay. That's really that's really lovely. Thank you very much indeed. So, if there's no no other questions on that, I'm going to move on to agenda item number five. Um, and so, I'm going to I'm going to ask Leslie McFarlane now, who's done a absolute massive amount of work on this, to present the report 
and your options to us. Thank you, Leslie. Unmute myself first. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Chair. Um, I'm presenting three papers this morning. Um, two are in relation to the mobile warden scheme, and there'll be one also in relation to the service support grants. Um, I think it's worth noting that um, the underspend that we will discuss in paper two could in effect also be used for the service support grants. Um, it is grants money after all. Um, so I could introduce all three papers together so that you can explore the landscape in full, or if you'd prefer, I can go one paper at a time. I, do you have a preference? John Williams, what, uh, what's your, your take? There's lead finance. What would you like to hear? Um, I'm just here in listening mode, really. I want to hear what the um, committee, um, you know, thinks about um, these uh, choices. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I have not got a particular preference. OK, I'm very Sarah, uh, and by what the oh, sorry, is going to say. Right. If members will excuse this, then I'm just going to go around my screen in, in order. Bill, what do you want to do? Take it all at once or separately? I think if Leslie feels that she can present the case for all, on all three papers um, clearly in one in one go, I'd be happy to to run with that. Claire, I I would much prefer taking it all three together. I think it's going to make the whole thing clearer. Brilliant, Sue. I would support what Claire's just said. Pete, agree. You got it, you unanimous, uh, Leslie, where you go, okay. all in one, please. <laughs> OK, so paper one um, explores the impacts which COVID is having um, on the existing mobile warden schemes. Um, so the, the, the paper outlines um, how each of the service of, services have had to adapt their model um, and what the finan financial impacts are, and they, they have differed. Um, they're not all, you know, um, negative, um, but some are really struggling, and I think we have to be aware of that. Um, what? So if you look at that in relation to paper two, so paper two presents us with an underspend um, as a result of the procurement and grant applications that we did earlier this year, and it actually gives us quite a substantial amount of money. So we have discussed actually having a round two um, where we would consider having um, or attracting more schemes. Um, but the more we looked into it, and I have to say Catherine and I, because this was a huge piece of work, the more we uncovered. And it became actually quite a complex landscape because we started looking at the future for how we were going to um, finance the future scheme or for the existing schemes as we sort of move into the future and the three year funding model. We looked at actually, well, we've got we've, we've just financed, fully financed two years worth of new schemes and the full funding for those will expire part way through a financial year, which would be 2022. So what happens then? You know, um, we would need to consider how we would continue to support, not fully fund, but perhaps part fund those new schemes as well. And then you take into consideration the service support grant um, situation. So again, exploring with uh, the recipients of our service support grants, again, the impacts of COVID have been varied, um, but uh, there has been um, particularly the I'd say the advice um, services have had greater uh, demand upon them um, financially um, as the kind of economic impacts of COVID are really beginning to take hold. So I, I think we have this pot of money and I think it's really down. We're, we're asking committee really. We, we've given you some recommendations which you can go with. We can come up with something completely different, um, but it's, it's complex. Um, and I think it's important that we just look at that bigger picture um, rather than just thinking about uh, another round of funding for more schemes. Does that make sense? It does indeed. Who would like to go first? Um, Joe, could I just ask uh, for some a piece of information from um, Leslie, please? Um, on page 33, Leslie, where you've got the table, 
Yeah. Can you just talk us through these numbers? Because I was really quite puzzled and and the difference between um, just talk us through them because you know the details. So, for example, the Mordens and Littlington, there are 25 people benefiting from the scheme and we've given them 2,155. In Cottenham, there are 22 people benefiting from the scheme and we've given them 1,800. Just give us an explanation of those figures. It's, so when we determine how much we're going to award each of the schemes, um, they they all have different models. Um, so we don't just take into consideration how many people are benefiting from the scheme. We also look at uh, the reserves that they have. We look at how much they charge per client um, and we look at other sources of funding. So that's why you, you'll get that variation that, that I think the complexity of the mobile warden scheme is not one single scheme uh, reflects another. They, the, the independent schemes have all been homegrown differently. Um, and so it's it's very difficult to say, actually, we based on the number of people receiving um, the service, we will award this amount of money. So I can't, I, you know, it's very difficult to okay, answer okay. that question. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Can I just follow that up, please, Janet? Sure. So sure. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is just to make sure that proportionately taking into account the different circumstances, we are funding at a similar level or a fair level across the board. That we can be sure that we're funding at a fair level, given those different circumstances, because I wanted to be reassured on that before I make a decision about what we do next. I think uh, that if this is a priority for the district council, um, we should be, um, I think it, it could be fairer than it is at the moment. I think at the moment the um, each of the independent schemes apply for the same amount every year. Uh, um, that's my understanding and that's been the case for the last 10 years. Um, applications really haven't changed um, and neither ha really has the uh, the amount that we have in the in the whole um, budget. Um, so I think it could really do with exploring um, and evaluating further. Before I come to Sue, uh, Claire, um, I've already declared my interest. So that's OK. I feel more comfortable in speaking now. But it, this is this is one of the things that the the mobile warden scheme in Melbourne has had. And Catherine will probably look at me and go, oh, no, he's going to say something horrid. I'm not <laughs> right. But um, if you look, we have 47. In actual fact, that's now too low because it's well into the 50s now. So but that that aside, there was only 2,200. And I, I always mentioned it to Catherine when she was doing this many, many, many moons ago. Um, uh, which which part of the pencil did you use? The rubber end or the pencil? You the writing end, I like, just for a laugh. But it was explained to me on a number of occasions. And the big one for Melbourne was that we had substantial reserves. And so therefore we could weather a storm better than a, perhaps a smaller, um, less well reserved should we say, uh, scheme. Catherine, but I'm coming to you in a minute, Sue. I am promise, Catherine. Uh, the, there are so many variables between yeah. all of the different schemes. The other yeah. things that we have to take into account, things like how much is the parish council contributing to the scheme? Um, how much do they, does the scheme actually charge its residents? We've been trying to get them to become more sustainable over time by encouraging them to charge a little bit more because in the beginning, some of them were charging sort of, you know, one pound fifty, two pound per resident for the service. And and in addition to that, the service isn't the same across all of them either. Some of them make phone calls. Some of them are doing three, four, five weekly visits. So it's it's really there's that it's not a level playing field in terms of um, the different factors involved in trying to make the decision about how much to fund uh, each scheme. Um, if they were all the same, it would be really nice, nice but they're not. Simple. OK, <laughs> thank you. So you're muted before you speak, but uh, where I'm you go. Now, um, I think 
we're not looking at the whole picture though, are we? All we're looking at are the independent schemes. We're not looking at any of the ones that are being run by Age UK, which also have, many of them have um, local charities supporting them and uh, parish councils supporting them and so on. If we're going to be looking at um, number of residents served versus how much we pay or how much is being funded, then you've got to bring all of those schemes into the equation. Um, and I, as, as uh, Catherine says, they're all providing a different level of service um, and we need to, I'm not sure that we're wise in tampering too much. We can try and even things out as we progress over time, but I'm rather concerned about um, doing too much tinkering about because we may um, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Thank you, Sue. Could you take your hand down, please, Sue? Bill, you're next. Um, yeah, thanks, Joe. So I'm uh, declaring interest here because um, my ward's two villages, Oban and Willingham, and they are currently setting up an Age UK scheme. But um, I wanted to ask whether or not, if, I, if I'm right, is, it, I, are, is Leslie suggesting that maybe the new schemes might get some reassurance that there is money in the pot down the line after the first two years of full, full funding? Um, to, to support them in an ongoing way, because if that's what she's suggesting, I would I would be very supportive because I know that both the Over and Willingham Parish Councils are a little bit nervous about the continuing funding after the end of the two years. Um, and I think if we were to able to give them some reassurance that there will be a level of support from the count from from South Cam's Council District Council, that would help them a lot, actually. It would give them a lot of reassurance. OK, thank you, Bill. Peter? Um, yeah, really following on from, from Bill, I, I feel this is a balance. So uh, what I've observed with my parishes, as both Leslie and, and Catherine will know, is they you can bring them to the line, but very difficult sometimes to get them over the line. And, and the reason for that is um, this sort of lingering doubt what happens after two years. Uh, of course, for established schemes, they've been through that experience and they know and they've got confidence. So there is this invisible line uh, and therefore whatever we do, if it's able to say to new, newly joining parishes, look, don't worry about uh, the period after the two years on Julie. But at the same time, I think we have to have a deal in inverted commas with those parishes to say, going back to Catherine's point, look, you should be charging a reasonable rate for this because otherwise, effectively, what we're saying is you're getting a free ride and that's never a good thing. I, th I think the parish should have some skin in the game uh, and, and it's a kind of deal, it's a contract between, it's not a formal contract, but you know what I mean. We say we will support this and we will give you confidence about the period two years hence. But at the same time, you have to set it up and run it properly and charge accordingly. Great. Uh, Leslie, Catherine, have you got comments? Can you take your hand down, Pete, please. We in the in the contracts that we have with our existing schemes at the moment, we um, we have stated that they there, there is a minimum fee that they must charge their clients and with the new schemes the new independent schemes that are joining so age uk already have a set amount and i think they charge nine pounds for an individual and 11 pounds for a, a couple um, but with the independent schemes again that varies a lot but we're stating a minimum of seven pounds fifty some of them have been as low as six pounds um, so going forwards, um, when we start to begin the new contracts from uh, April of next year, that will be a, there will be a minimum requirement that they do charge. Emphasising the sustain ongoing sustainability. OK, good, good. Thank you. Uh, Claire. Uh, yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, 
Leslie, could I just come back to something that you said earlier about the over the last 10 years, things have developed in a sort of um, perhaps uneven way, if, if that's a fair word to use. And maybe uh, there could be some investigation about how things could be more evened out. Could you say a little bit more about that? Um, again, I think what we need to do is, you know, if you look at each of those different schemes, um, they uh, they they all acquire uh, additional funding from um, a wide range of sources, um, and I I think as uh, Councillor Macdonald alluded to, when we're trying to attract new schemes and we want more schemes to set up. The biggest barrier to uh, that commitment is the fear of ongoing funding. Uh, we know that, um, and Joseph and I have discussed this in the past recently, um, at the moment there's no commitment from county council. Um, so if, if, if I think if schemes could be assured that there was um, greater commitment from us, um, and if we could start those negotiations with county, you know, I don't know how how far that would go. Um, and I think that would just take some of the burden from some of these smaller schemes in trying to find, you know, scrabbling around really, just trying to find additional um, income to support these schemes. I think that would level out the playing field. OK, thank you. Well, that will help me to make up my mind about what we should do next. Thanks. And take your hand down, please, Claire. Um, that that discussion that uh, Leslie and I had is um, is quite pertinent, really, because I think you can perhaps confirm this, Leslie and Catherine. I think, but Melbourne's scheme is the only scheme, certainly in South Cams. I, I have a sneaking suspicion it's in Cambridgeshire as well that actually has a grant, an annual grant. Uh, and we have that, this is a historical one. This goes back a long time at least 10 if not longer years i suspect longer um so and that's 7700 and that's been 7700 from the word go it's not gone up so that was that was first awarded with 17 clients so now and one village is now three villages and 55 i think 56 clients now so that that, that money is just spread across the entire operation if you like so more clients you have, less you have to spend on each client, so to speak, as a support. But it, it, this is a real piece of work, I think, that our officers can perhaps with demonstrating what we're doing here now, can perhaps go then to county with our county colleagues within our council as well, members to perhaps smooth the wire fraction, because if you look at adult social care, um, the cost to the state for those who aren't going to fund their own care is extortionate and that bill has to be paid from somewhere and for a small amount of money and it is small if you can if you can help assist one member of public to stay out of state care if you want to call it that then that is a massive saving overall so you know, it helps to finance itself more or less within the first year. You have one or two people across South Cams alone. The money they would hand out would actually be easily comparable to two or three people going into care. OK, Sue, you put your hand up. You're still muted, Sue. No, hit that, hit that button, Sue. I couldn't get my hair out to go on it. Um, <laughs> I, th I think, and and I know some of the history of mobile wardens in South Cams. That is one of the reasons that previous administrations were a little reluctant to invest too much, that they felt that the social services should have been funding um this service and uh now that we do fund this service there is a reluctance from the social services uh, county council to um 
take it on board. I am very interested, Joe, that you know the scheme that we talked about at Lulworth, Fen Stanton and Fen Drayton. Fen Stanton has got a grant from the County Council, but we are supporting Lulworth and Fen Drayton within the same scheme. So there is an element of persuading the County Council that it is their duty and their responsibility to support us. I, think. I agree. Sue, may I just ask, the grant that Fen Stanton have, have had, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the scheme itself that covers the multiple villages, yeah. are they spreading that grant amongst all villages? Fen Stanton are, are carrying a very substantial proportion of the cost of the um, warden. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is what our it's scheme not does. being said, if you see what I mean. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, it's like an income into the scheme and then they just, that's what we do. We don't yeah. make a big thing of it. We just yeah. get the money and we just spread it across yeah. the three villages. That's fine. Yeah, so, yeah okay. Uh, yeah. Leslie. Like that as well, that money has come from the Innovate and Cultivate Fund at uh, uh, Count, uh, Cambridge County Council. And the, the people that run the, that, that fund are really keen to set up more mobile warden schemes. So they see the model that we've got and they want to extend that across the county. Um, so they are apportioning some money specifically for the expansion of mobile warden schemes countywide. So to me, that, that gives me a kind of glimmer of hope that there's someone in county that actually values the, this, this scheme. So I think it really is just a case of speaking to the right person um, in uh, commissioning adult social care um, and getting that person around the table to see whether we can get that kind of commitment for existing ongoing schemes. Agreed. Anybody else got anything to say? John Williams, have you got anything that you'd like to add? Being the lead member for finance, obviously, and the person authorising the money that we've spent now. Yeah, pick up on, on what Peter uh, MacDonald uh, said, you know, I think we do need to obviously look beyond the beyond 2022 um, and we need to set a roadmap, uh, have a plan on on how to take things beyond that in different scenarios. So the scenario that um, the county support us, um, another scenario that um, the new schemes um, achieve some um, degree of independence or the worst scenario they don't actually uh, get off the ground and I think we need to be working quite closely with um, the county and Age UK to put that road plan together to put those to put a plan together to met, meet those different scenarios. You know, at the end of the day, um, we may well have to do, make the decision to step in and fund the new schemes for a bit longer. Mm. Um, that then, but to do that, I think we need to ensure that first of all, those schemes are charging a fair um, price for what they deliver to their clients. Um, and secondly, that um, the management of those schemes is is good and that they are actively seeking support. Um, I mean, you know, it is it is a difficult area because you could argue that, you know, a Parish Council could well not do anything and just at the end of the two years say, well, this is going to shut unless you give us more money. Um, I haven't seen any evidence of that. I think the Parish Councils in the new schemes have been very cooperative and been willing to work with us to make their schemes uh, viable. And um, I think that's how we go forward. I, we did look at having a uniform scheme across the district 
um, under one contract. But that would take away and, you know, very forcefully members um, pointed out to me that 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 would take away the element of the local community one being involved yeah. and uh, and, you know, supporting themselves. And I, I take that on board. I think, you know, a, a uniform district run scheme would not not be appropriate for us um and 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 indeed would go against our principle of getting local communities to um be self-sustainable but that does mean that we're going to have to put up with the fact that every community will want to do its own thing some communities will um want to join with others some communities probably will have a scheme very similar if not the same to another community but we have to take on board that there will be some places where the model is different and we need to co we need to accommodate that in some way i think leslie's done a really good job on these reports she's tempted to do that tempted to give us a, cha a range of choices going forward um, and as I said to you um, earlier, you know, I'm here in listening mode. I have no one particular preference. I want to hear your views um, before we decide how to take this forward. But I'm, you know, as you know, I'm very much in favour of us developing the Warden schemes for the reasons that Joe's mentioned. It, you know, from just the financial aspect, it reduces social care costs. But also it means that our local communities are looking after the most vulnerable people in their communities and that's how it should be. Yeah. It shouldn't be someone coming in uh, without that uh, local knowledge um, because all it becomes then is a service. And uh, I, I think this needs to be more than just a, just a service. So we're going to have to accept that there are there we, we we're going to have um, 80 odd bespoke services in our in our parishes and somehow we're going to have to handle that and manage that um, going forward. Uh, uh, before I come to uh, Bill and Claire, I, I, I thoroughly agree with what John just said. I mean, the, the example of community working for itself. Um, yes, yesterday, um, the mobile scheme uh, sprang into action after one of the wardens who was on a day off with the family couldn't get hold of the phone call that the person via phone call that you know doing a, a and so the the scheme is galvanized into action somebody else goes around in this case it was uh, my wife and myself we went around we finally managed to uh, gain access to the to the resident who was in excruciating pain with a, a knee the doctors were called fed and watered, um, I stepped out so that the lady could be dealt with by my wife for dignity. And as a result of that, conversations had with members of the family over the phone where it was more of a direction than a request for a key safe to be ordered and placed on the outside of the building so that we could get in and not ask a lady who's got uh, severe uh, right knee problems to get up and try and walk 10 feet to get to the door to open it. So that happened. I have the key box sitting next to me here, which I'll be fitting this afternoon. But my, my point is that's that's the level of, of local community doing its thing for its thing. And I see Sue nodding there, and we've often talked about this, Sue, in the past over the years that we've known each other. And it, it, it is very, very important that that is maintained. So I shall go to Bill first, if I may, then Claire. Thank you, Joes. Um, I, I'm going to ask a question, really, and uh, whether this is um, doable or not. Um, first of all, I say that I, I, I fully support what people uh, things uh, the things that Sue Ellington and others have said about the county council should be, I think, supporting us at a higher level, and I think we should pursue that for sure. Um, but when it comes to the parish councils, would it be possible to offer them? Um, a reassurance that we will be continuing support for their schemes beyond the, the first two years. 
on the basis of a, maybe a percentage of what they put into the to the to the scheme as well, maybe with a maximum. So you know, the more the parish council put in, the more we will put in up to a up to an agreed max. Um, it's a question. It's not. It's just. A, I'm just really speaking out loud in in some ways, but it does. It will then both give parish councils and give them the reassurance that there will be support, but it will also kind of make sure that they are thinking about their precept, setting their precept at the right level to give the support from from the parish as well. Claire? Thanks, Jos. Um, so I've got uh, three points. First of all, to go back again to what Leslie was saying earlier, um, I think it, it's going to be very difficult, but I, I would like to uh, be sure that given all the vagaries of the different schemes, we are funding them fairly. Um, I appreciate that they're all very different, but I, I think I'm being reassured on that, but I, I just would like confirmation that we are funding them across the board fairly. Um, on In relation to Leslie's papers, um, I and what others have been saying, I think we ought to be looking to use the underspend to secure the future. Um, I'm not that keen on putting money into helping people who've had difficulties with COVID because I think what Leslie's paper is indicating to me is that the, there are difficulties, but not so many. I mean, if there is a scheme that's in severe difficulties as a result of COVID, we could take a special one-off application from them. But I think we need to be securing the future of the, mo the current mobile warden scheme and also trying to expand it. And I think that's where we should put um, the underspend. Um, and at the same time, um, try to encourage the county to do its part, to play its part. Lovely. Bill and Claire, can you take down your hands, please? Thanks. Um, well said, everybody, actually. Well said. Uh, Leslie, Catherine, do you have any uh, things to come back with? This is very much an open floor, so. I wonder whether at this point it's worth just looking at the options in the paper and having a, a bit of a discussion, if it's a good time to do that, about whether, I think probably the question is, are we are we concerned with using underspend or are we, and, and if you like patching up, patching together funding for the next three years for the existing schemes and then the shortfall for the for the new schemes, or are we saying we need to just look at the entire pot and make sure the right amount is in the pot going forward? And I think that the, the, the two options sort of try to open that discussion, but they're not the only two ways of doing it. We had we had lots of different options and we had to try and hone it down, and there were so many variables that um that these are the, the two clearest options, I think, but it might be worth just going to those and having that discussion. OK, thank you. Leslie, do you want to? Well, I just reiterate really what, what Catherine said. Um, and Catherine and I have, uh, you know, we've been through many iterations of what could be done with the money and the ramifications and the what ifs, if we do this, if we do that, then what? So we, we've tried to make this as, as simple as possible, really, by um, sort of narrowing it down to two options, but then trying to illustrate how much you would have to spend in. Uh, and we, we're using that, um, the, the dates which would coincide with now up until the end of the next anticipated three year contract for the existing schemes. So it's really what we do now um, for the rest of this year with the underspend and then how do we allocate that if, if, that un, if the underspend, if we're going to retain that underspend and not let it be absorbed into the general account, then how do we use that money wisely, it, taking into consideration the uh, sort of funding, properly funding the 14 existing schemes, um, and then, as Bill suggested, um, 
part, perhaps part funding those new schemes that have just come on board that will uh, whose funding will expire in September 2022 and then how do we then bring them in line to the existing schemes whose contract ends in March 2024. So we'd probably be looking at sort of 18 months of continued part funding for those new schemes as well. If that makes sense. It makes it makes huge sense, huge sense. Peter. Um, so the way I'm approaching this rightly or wrongly is sustainability overall. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, not just the existing, not just existing 14, but getting to a, a new number, whatever that new number is, 20 or 20 plus or whatever. So uh, I'm I'm inclined to go with the second option because if I understand the way Leslie and Catherine have laid it out, that allows us to reconsider for the existing schemes in April 20 or for it from April 2021. Uh, plus it gives us this 18 months worth of new schemes from October 22. So I'm, I'm, I'm be, you know, prepared to be convinced otherwise, but that, that seems to me to be the more sustainable option personally. So are you, are you talking on page 25, Pete? 30, 31. Or oh, 31, sorry. Right. A question for John Williams, if I may. Something that uh, Leslie just said then about securing the underspend, John. How long can we secure an underspend for? I mean, obviously, We've got a time lag here. This is 2020, 2020, 21, and we're looking at 2022 stroke three, uh, if I'm correct in that assumption, is that this money that we have as an underspend here is likely to be spent certainly towards that end of the spectrum than it is now because these people are setting up. So are we permitted lawfully to to carry over funds and secure that for the, yeah. I mean, since we are doing service grants anyway for those three year periods, or that's the intention, um, it kind of makes sense. It, it would require um, probably the cabinet to approve the carry forward at, at the end of the financial, at the end of that financial year. I mean, this yeah. is a two year scheme, so it's in the budget until the end of 21-22 um, but then if there's money left over then that would have to be wired for the next for the following year and that would have to be taken by the cabinet I think the, right. the amount involved it wouldn't need to go to council I think it would be a cabinet decision okay. to do that so, so you can I, recommend clearly you can recommend to cabinet that that is that that is done but um yeah it would have to be a cabinet decision it sure. couldn't be done by me i mean i i'm 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 i think with peter with option two right is that we can protect what we've done if you like in, in future years as we go forward i think the covid whilst and I agree with Claire on this, and I saw uh, Sue nodding as well while Claire was speaking that I think perhaps the COVID is is fine. There may be a special circumstance for perhaps one or two of the, the schemes who have been hit extra hard or whatever, but I speak from my own scheme. We weathered the storm okay. It was, you know, there was a bit of spend here and there, but we had the reserves to be able to, to deal with that, which ironically are what reserves are for, right? So, you know, you then move back forward so it's the new schemes that bother me the most trying to find their feet trying to to learn the craft it's it's a difficult craft to learn it's what line you don't cross and there are there are a whole load of things they have to learn the training will once they start their training processes with dementia training and safeguarding the world will open up before them and think why on earth did i do this because frankly there's a lot to learn Right, and I, and I and I I want to support them as much as we can, you know, as, and that's a, as a case of talking to other schemes. These people, to we haven't had any contact, as far as I know, from our on our scheme from anybody apart from sorry, Cam, uh, gambling gay. Um, other than that, nobody else seems to have contacted. So there's, there's a a deficit in the exchange of information. But I I I I do 
feel quite strongly about the option two. But for me, it's about how we secure that funding. And John's already hopefully answered that. But I wouldn't want that, John, that that funding to be secured for now and then to be, if you like, oh, we were going to give you 100,000 to carry on for the next two years and we'll dock off 57,000 of that and only give you 43, right? So we do need to be realistic as to what this is going to cost. And obviously this is going to be a job for officers to say, we're going to need X, Y, and Z going forward. Um, and I would like to have that my gut is telling me that the 57 is to temporarily look to support the, the, the new schemes going forward in case they don't quite make it, as Bill said, with regards to the supporting the parishes, because ultimately we want the parishes to be able to cough up some as well, year on year on year in their precepts. So they're going to have to get used to doing this. They're going to have to be able to justify it to their own parishioners within within their patches that will take a little while it really will i have to say in my own area melbourne and my own village that's it's it's not it's not discussed it's just approved if you like as part of a process going forward in the other two villages there are still questions even two or three years down the line questions as to are we supporting this is it the right amount of money is it this is it that they tend to dissect it a bit more rather than just allow the process to happen. So I can see this being replicated what I see yearly in all these other new schemes with parish council. So as Bill rightly says, perhaps we should look to the future as to how we are going to help the parishes on a perhaps a percentage basis. I don't know that perhaps be for officers to come back and say what would be financially prudent. So, so my understanding then is that what you're agreeing is that we're not going to have any new additional schemes. We're not going to provide a one off COVID grant unless there is one, you know, a particular um, scheme that is in sort of dire need. And you, the underspend um, that we currently have 58,000 is going to be reabsorbed into the general account. And what you're going to do is a kind of ground zero. Um, we would work out how much we think these existing schemes will need come April 2021. Um, and then what we'll need in 2022, in addition, for when the, these new schemes, their funding expires partly through the financial year. When you said absorbed into the general fund, so that, that to me says give John back the money. To yes, give back exactly. To, so uh, that was part of option no, two. No, no, no. I'd, I'd like to change that bit. I'd like to be able to have the money under your desk or your desks, right? With the proviso, it can be carried over. So right. you, you, you maintain that money in your budgets. Yeah. With the proviso of looking after the new schemes as, as and when they may, may or may not need it. The work that Bill was talking about with regards to going out to parishes to help kind of come up with some scheme that would make them a bit more confident that there is a bit of help going forward. That might have to come out of that money, but then there's going to be a long term effect after the service grant period is then renewed yeah. as to then how we then fund that. Yeah. Um, going forward. Mm -hmm. Sue, before I come, Sue, would you mind coming, coming in? You're, you're on mute, mate. mate. Um, I agree with all you're saying, Joe. The only other bit that I didn't like about what Leslie was saying was that we wouldn't have any more new schemes. And I feel that if somebody comes forward with a proposal, we ought to have that money under the desk, as you suggest, to be able to support them whenever that happens, rather than waiting for next April or whenever. So sorry, Sue, what I should have said is rather than go out now and specifically attract new schemes, what we can do is when the next round of funding, grant funding becomes available, which we will start advertising at the end of November, so in a month's time, we can also uh, attract, we can ask new schemes to also apply for, for funding from that same pot that the existing schemes draw from. Catherine, you put your hand up. Uh, well, I was just going to say there are sort of three in my mind, there are three different periods we need to look at. There's how much is in the pot for the 2021 
three year scheme is 27,000 enough? And what we're possibly saying based on that conversation is that some of the underspend could be used to top that up, but that we just might need to look at what's fundamentally in that pot because the existing 14 schemes plus new ones could apply from November onwards. So there's that. There's what do we do about the 18 months where the new schemes who are being fully funded have no pot to apply to because it's already been set up as a three year scheme. And then beyond that, from 2024 onwards, what's in the pot for the old schemes, the new ones, and then any that have popped up along the way. Um, it may be too far in advance now to think about 2024, but we, we need to be mindful of the fact that we're setting up new schemes who then need a pot to apply to. And whether it's um, done on the basis of what Bill has said in terms of a percentage of what parish councils put in or not, there still needs to be a, some consideration given to that pot that's currently only 27,000. Right, before I come to Bill, that's a really good point, uh, John JW is is the fact that we we spoke about this before as a as a committee and with officers and what have you about the future and we do like an MTFS don't we for the council and I I'm, I'm actually I know this is, I, I love MTFSs and I love a spreadsheet but actually this isn't this isn't beyond the wit of man I mean really we've got a scheme here where we are essentially rolling out a service via community groups to assist people. If we don't think of the future quite a way down the line and it drops off the cliff, as I think uh, Simon Edwards used to say, and, and, uh, and you say it, it, it will drop off the cliff at year four, right? So you always reevaluate. So the MTFS is a good process to be able to apply to this. And I just wonder whether or not we should do a mini MTFS and say, actually, we are going to require this, this, this and this each year we go forward and say, there you go, JW, right? Or whoever's going to be lead finance whenever in the future. This is what council needs, what the, you know, the, the community's team need to fund this this process. So, Catherine, I'm Just coming to you. Another, another right. thing to think about on that basis is the inflationary uplifts, because what you if you have a pot of twenty seven thousand and you allocate the inflationary uplift to the organisations, then when you start year four, do you go back down again to 27,000 or is the pot starting at the point at which it's got to with those three years of uplift? We have the same issue on all grants um, where other than with the community chest, but with the service support grants, we have got the same issue. You provide a three year round of funding, 85,000 in the pot. By the time you get to the end, it's 95,000. But then when they start again in year four and apply, there's 85,000 in the pot. And so actually they're losing each time, losing out each time because their costs have gone up, but the pot goes back down to what it was before. And that's that's what's happened in the past. So it's just another thing to be aware of and be mindful of that while the pot can't keep growing exponentially, we do we do need to be mindful of those inflationary uplifts as well. Sure. I hope you I hope you got that one, John. <laughs> uh, Bill. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'd hate to think that um, we, we couldn't introduce new new schemes in the future um, if people, you know, if parishes request it. But I do think we need to consolidate what we've got. That's my that's I really feel great, really quite strongly that we need to make sure that none of the schemes that we are that are in uh, train now fall fail, because after all, that would be a very bad advert for for the scheme and actually might be um, put, put other parishes off. So I think we do need to consolidate and uh, make sure that the, the schemes that are in their infancy um, uh, uh, ca can keep going. And above all, we can reassure parish councils that they're not going to be left with a huge bill at the end of all of this. Claire. Um, yes, are we? Leslie, did you say that you're putting out a call for more schemes at the end of the month? Well, what we can say is that grant funding will be available um, from April 2021. Um, and we would what we could say is uh, this is for existing schemes and any new schemes should they want to apply. On okay. a part funded basis. Oh, yeah, yeah, on a part funded basis, not okay. a full funded. So taking up 
Bill's point, which is really important, and then going back to the original purpose of this new look at mobile warden scheme, which was to, to try to get as even a spread across the district because we had these blank spaces where there was no coverage at all. So is there enough money in the pot? Supposing um, five places, three to five places came forward wanting to set up new schemes. Are we then going to be completely overstretched and would we not be able to do what Bill is advocating? Theoretically, I, I don't think that that would happen. I don't know whether Catherine would agree. I mean, we offered full funding for new schemes to set up, but only one or only three schemes came forward um, uh, through that kind of non uh, non procured route through the grant funding and that was offering full funding. So I think going forwards, if we're only offering part funding, personally, I, I don't think that that scenario would happen um, we might we might achieve one or two. Would you agree, Catherine? It's possible that they would, yes. And I, 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 either now or in the future, we could be doing some workshops with people to, to look at how they can fund um, these these schemes going forward. So we could have some some workshops where whereby we look at the different scenarios and the different makeup of funding that's possible, the applications they can make, places they can apply to, as well as looking at parish precept. Um, but I, in time for April 21, I don't think there would be a massive rush for part funding from new schemes that don't the, 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 the already funded organisations. Um, that said, the question still remains for me as to whether or not 27,000 is enough for the existing schemes. Um, we may think it is, in which case that's 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 fine. Um, I yeah. personally, I think it's on the low side, especially if we want to do what Bill is suggesting and, and give people reassurance. I think it yeah, it's, it's a small sum of money. Um, can I go back to something, Joe, that Catherine's just mentioned? And that was to do with workshops. And I just wonder whether or not we've had an opportunity where we could bring all these schemes that we funded together and have a learning exercise, especially now as it's probably easier to do it on Zoom or Teams than trying to bring everyone to Camborne. I mean, they're very diverse and I, I wonder if they have ever got together and exchanged ideas and whether any of us as members have ever heard their experiences. We have, we have done grant funding workshops before, but I think there's a very different uh, applying for grants for bits and pieces of funding from schemes that exist around and about is very different from the, the, the notion of trying to make sure that within your parish budgeting cycle, you have uh, allocated some of your precept to something and, and done it in good time. And I think if, if there's an example like in Melbourne where they're doing it and doing it well, then maybe we could pull people together in advance of the end of the two years of full funding uh, with 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 Age UK and bring them all together and 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 have a bit of a, a discussion and a, a demonstration, if you like, of how how best to do that. That would help, I think, allay some of their fears. I would certainly support that. Yeah, so would I. You take your hand down, please, Claire. Thanks. OK, so are we someone has got their hand up? No, are we? I just want to make sure Bill Bill is the lead for this, isn't he? He's the cabinet member in his He's department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, yeah, right. So, so Sorry. OK, so Bill, I was just saying that as the lead, this is your department, so to speak, uh, from, from the cabinet point of view. Um, I, I can see some extra bits of work going on here as well. I don't know about you, Catherine and Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a, just a little bit. Just a bit. I, don't know, I don't know if we do over time, but you might. <laughs> oh, they love it, Joe's. I don't really. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, then. That's yeah. fine, then. I came in on my day off for this. I really love it. <laughs> did, did you actually came? Did you actually yeah. come in, or are you still at home? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm at home in this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so your travel expenses shouldn't be that much. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> I told you, I love it. <laughs> um. 
I think we're, we're looking at option two, aren't we, as a, as a, as a committee? Yeah, um, can I see some nods if you are, yeah? Kind of a hybrid, yeah, so, isn't it? It's, it's a bit uh, of a hybrid. It's, 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 hybrid definitely, it's, it's definitely going to be a hybrid. It's a 2.1. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Indeed. So, 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 Chair, I think it's option two. Let, let um, Catherine and, and Leslie comment. Um, if I understand what we've discussed, it's, it, it's option two. Yep. which is existing in new schemes um but for the 50 it was at the 58 or the 54 uh k uh to be embedded into that somewhere if john is happy with that so it's kind of an option 2.1 is that right yep it's to go into leslie's piggy bank it, it's, it's got it's, it's in the bucket under the desk yeah, right, so we, do, do, we don't want it absorbed back into the general fund right. where we then have to start larking around trying to to get money back when it might be something we can do reasonably quickly even via this committee or even officers own own jurisdiction and what have you said to, to do what they've got to do yeah it's because you know when you look at the comments um on the far right of option two it's saying the underspend is not used for existing budgets but what we're actually saying is the underspend will be used so yes. you, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you look at the comments in option one, so it, we're actually going with the. Um, uh, so we need to rework everything this. Everything that's listed in option two in the first left hand column, except for underspend being reabsorbed. OK, Leslie, just. And we're going to be sense. rolling forward that 58K yeah. with the 27. OK. Leslie, can you just ha just just hang fire just for a second? Aaron, I was just going to come to you actually because of what Leslie was saying. Mm -hmm. We have those two options and it looks like we have, as, as Peter says, a 2.1, whichever you want to call it, another option. We will need to reword this, I'm assuming, or yeah. would we just reword an option in as uh, option three, so to speak? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, the, the best thing would be if, if the committee is happy with this to uh, agree that... I'm not hearing you, Aaron. Oh, um, can everybody hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, just if, if the committee is happy with this, to agree that uh, officers agree the exact wording with this, uh, along with the chair and the lead member for finance, uh, after the meeting is over, just uh, to tidy up any sort of uh, minutia of, of it, uh, but under the sort of proviso that it is option 2.1, but exact wording to be agreed. Okay. Did you get that, Catherine? I, I don't know whether I dropped out or Aaron dropped out or what happened. So no, I didn't. Sorry. Aaron, you say it again. Yeah, of course, Chair. So um, uh, it would just be as long as the committee is happy that um, officers, so yourself Kat, and Leslie Catherine would uh, go away and agree exact wording with uh, Joseph as chair of the committee and John as the lead member for finance. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we need the salient points then to agree the salient points for this to happen, yeah? So essentially it's going to be, we'll call it option 2.1, 2.3, whatever you have, the new option. The underspend is to be used for existing budgets. So, so can I be clear which year we're talking? There are two years worth of underspend there. There's 57,655 from this year that could go into the first year of the three year funding. And then there's 58 from next year. Where's that going? Are we are we rolling it all into one? I, or? I was I was going to re roll it all into one. And use it across the three years. Are we are we uplifting the amount essentially with that that's advertised as being in the mobile warden scheme budget? I, I want I yeah. want to be clear what we are, how much we advertise that scheme as having in it. At the moment, it's only got 27,000 in with the underspend from those two years. It could be significantly more even if you spread that that 115,000 across the three years, is that how you want to use it and advertise it as such? Or is it when we talk about Leslie keeping it in her budget, is that something that she should use at her discretion but not advertise for no, applications should, to come well, in? How, how do you want to use it? We, we, yeah. should, we should take the two together. This is just my view, yeah. uh, Catherine. We should take the two together and, and we absolutely must advertise it. Because yes. what we're seeking to do is to use those funds to 
yeah. and maintain the sustainability and to extend by another six or another 10 or whatever the number is. Yeah. So yeah. we're spreading the 115 thousand pounds worth of underspend across the three years yeah, or the yeah. next three years of the mobile warden scheme for existing schemes but new schemes can apply into that should they wish Correct. yeah 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 yes okay uh, are you are you and leslie happy with that leslie you're muted you're muted are leslie, you and leslie happy with that sorry i was trying to say that that one hundred and fifteen thousand. are we also adding the twenty-seven thousand pounds that's already sitting yes. in the budget. Yes, I yeah. think it's twenty-seven thousand pounds a year plus a third from e for each year of yeah. the hundred and fifteen that's underspent. So yeah, you're, so I don't, I'm, I'm do the maths quickly, but you're, yeah, yeah. you've got coming, about coming, thirty-eight thousand extra per year. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. And and coming back to John's comment that. Um, it def uh, I assume has to go to cabinet, but probably not to council, but to be confirmed. Sure, we can do that. Yeah. Um, Chair, sorry, if, if you don't mind, I did have a, a quick look in the constitution uh, just with regards to that. My understanding is that uh, council aims is correct and that that can just be done by cabinet without needing to go to council. Thank you. Cheers. Claire. Um, yeah, I want to come back to the point about the county. Are we going to go to the county and and let them know what we're doing, the extent of what South Cams is doing on the mobile warden scheme and try to enter into a conversation about their, the county's doing more than it is at present, uh, more uh, evenly spread across the district? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I, I think like we to, should. I'd, oh, sorry. sorry I, I, absolutely, I think we should. Absolutely. I mean, this is a discussion that Leslie and I have had on uh, several occasions. And the work that that um, Leslie's been doing with the fund from the county, what's it called? Innovate and Cultivate. That's it, Innovate and Cultivate, who are essentially have an open door by the sound of it, albeit ajar. We just need to kick it in and make sure that. And actually what we've just done here today, if you like, could demonstrate the next several years if it's allowed by Aaron, it demonstrates the next several years that what we're intending to do and how we are going to be doing it. There's a, there's a cunning plan, if you like, for three three years in the minimum here. So it gives county a chance, if it isn't going to be this year, it gives them a chance to be able to sit down and work out what they can do and how they can then help partially fund this as they go forward. Because that it is one huge chunk of money that we get in Melbourne. If you look at it by comparison to everybody else, Bar Fen Stanton getting nothing. So it makes a big difference to us. Claire, can you can put I, your hand down because you're blocking out Leslie's face and it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Could I, could I just add as well? Just I'm just thinking. So we, so potentially we've got sixty-five and a half thousand pounds per year for the next three years. So we're going to have sixty-five thousand pounds. For next year where we're um, for existing schemes plus any new that might um, want to have a part funded scheme but then part way through 2022 we're going to have that surge of 10 new schemes wanting part of that funding so we need to allocate more money for the financial year 22 23 to 24 and 23, 24. This is what I was saying, Lizzie, about a, a mini MTFS, because you can just stick it down into a spreadsheet and it spits out the number at the other end. And I then, don't know what a mini MTFS is. Medium term financial strategy. <laughs> it, it's, 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 just, it, it's just literally a set of figures on the page that we need this. We can put all of the, the schemes into it, if you like, or just keep it very simple at high level. And, and just uh, this is this is what it's going to mean now. This is a current situation in 19 stroke 20, uh, 20 stroke 21. And yeah. for the next few years, this is what it goes. Here's the here's the cliff edge where you're talking about all these other schemes needing the 10 schemes or was needing the extra funding. How the heck are we going to fund that? That's the figure we're going to need at that point. That gives John or whoever in cabinet are the one that they're going to sit down and go, actually, this is a good point. We now need to find that money or have egg in your face. Mm. 
Bill. Um, yeah, um, uh, Leslie, I'll just say, first of all, that you, you, no need to worry. Spread, spreadsheet Joe's will, will help you out on this. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, wh wh where we, we go, is it, to be fair to Catherine and Leslie, um, uh, Joe's, maybe, maybe we should um, agree if, if, if Leslie was to put together what she feels we've decided, because it, you, we have changed things a bit. Um, and to to put it past past us by correspondence, just so that we're all happy that it's what we've we've agreed. Would, would that be the procedurally the right thing to do? I'm just I'm just trying to think that you know it's a lot of money, and I think Leslie probably would feel happier if we're all signed up to. Uh, there's no misunderstandings, basically. Yeah. Do you agree, Leslie? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I agree, but I mean, there's Leslie because it's, you know, it's her pen. If we, if, <laughs> can I just say, if we, if we, if we split that um, underspend for the two years across the three years of a, of the for the existing schemes that new ones could potentially apply to, then that's fine. What we then can't allow is the new schemes who will be uh, setting up with full funding to then apply into that because the fund has gone. So we still, to take Leslie's point from before, still have that 18 months to think about. And I know you're talking about the medium term financial strategy and creating a mini one, but there's still that to think about. And then what will be in the pot from 2024 onwards needs thinking about as well. So um, right. we we can we can say what we think we've agreed here with that underspend. We might need to do a little bit of maths as well around how much we think those those new schemes will want or need from us. But that will again vary based on what their parish council is going to put in. Um, we might need to say there is an, a sum available and then worry about 2024 later. Right, before I come to council, uh, Aaron has just stuck his hand up, so this is constitutional. Sort of. Uh, thanks, Chair. I mean, uh, I was just going to say that actually, you know, what has definitely been agreed at this meeting currently is that, you know, you are going to be taking this over and that uh, John and Cabinet will make the necessary arrangements to uh, via this so that it can be kept in the budget moving forwards. What it seems to me won't be able to be agreed today because to my mind, there needs to be additional information as exactly how this money is going to be dealt with going forward and at what proportion should be allocated to each year moving forward. So potentially what I would suggest is you agree the basics now in the sense of um, carrying that forwards, but for the detail of that uh, and how that money will be used uh, is potentially to, uh, well, either agree that after the meeting or to bring a report back, which would be my suggestion to uh, the next meeting on that. And then a full decision can be made with all of the information. Yeah. It kind of seems sensible. Um, while you're thinking about that, Catherine, because uh, your face is definitely in <laughs> thinking mode. Right, I'll go to, uh, I think it was Peter, then Claire, if I may. Uh, yeah, thank you. If I, if I can just make a brief point, then I unfortunately have to drop out for another appointment. Um, uh, uh, we should be a little bit careful. Uh, first of all, I agree with what Aaron, Aaron has said. What, what we're trying to do here is discuss uh, numbers we don't have in front of us. I mean, we have in general sense. So um, the consultants would call it an as is and to be analysis that, that shows if we did nothing, what would happen in the next three years for existing and new schemes. And then the second scenario is under version 2.1 is what's the 2B situation. And that's what has to be agreed by us and ultimately go to cabinet. Thanks, Pete. Claire? Yeah, so uh, I, what I'm saying really is a combination of what both Peter and Aaron have just said. I, I'm beginning to lose it now because I haven't got figures in front of me. And I'd like a report to come to the next meeting, which brings together what Catherine and Leslie and everyone else has been saying. Uh, unless we have to make a decision today, I think we need uh, working on the 2.1 option and then looking at the different scenarios across the few years ahead. Um, I, I've become really now rather confused. OK, stick your hand down, please, Claire. Aaron, just then a quickie. 
what would your be your advice be to to progress this this now? Um, sorry, can you hear me? I'm not actually sure. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I've managed, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my suggestion for today would be to make an agreement that um, the money will be kept in the budget, uh, not reabsorbed into the general account moving forwards. Um, and that and, and actually just to agree that a report will be brought to the committee next time to make uh, a full decision on exactly how and when that money will be spent. Um, uh, but with regards to details today, I think you're going to struggle to get much else other than uh, keeping that uh, money in the budget. Thank you, Aaron. I think this is this is the, this is the most sensible advice. We don't want to do anything that wrong and then puts the money at risk through a bad decision. That would be wrong. So shall we shall we follow Aaron's advice? Um, so essentially, I think we are. If I, if I may to have a show of hands, Aaron, do you want to just look at this to make sure, or would you prefer to do it yourself, Aaron? Right. They essentially, make an agreement that we keep any of the monies that have not been spent, the underspend, in the budget for Leslie and, and Catherine, whichever budget you want to call it. So that, that's where that stays at the moment. So are we in, and that not to go back into the general fund, are we in agreement with that? That's unanimous, Aaron, thank you. And then the next part of this will be, could we respectfully and kindly ask officers to work extra nights and weekends <laughs> for the next the next meeting if that if it's not doable for the next meeting please say so it needs and, to and be done for the next meeting just because the grant scheme needs to be advertised soon okay well then apologies for giving you this extra That's work right. sorry joe's can i ask is it is it possible um to to actually do it between meetings if, if, if time is critical could can we do this agree it by correspondence or something i i, I sorry i'm not sure on the procedure for that but um that might help well, Catherine and Leslie. Aaron's got his hand up. Where you go, Aaron? Um, my advice would be to deal with this during committee. Um, if you would like to deal with it sooner rather than later, my advice would be to hold an extraordinary meeting. We've actually got quite yeah. a busy agenda at the next meeting anyway. So yeah. um, I would be very happy to organise an extra meeting that would work for everybody and uh, get this dealt with sooner. So in that case, then, in answer to that, Given officers enough time to be able to bring the, the the report together, rather than say in the next week or so, <laughs> shall we shall we look to have the extraordinary meeting for this report a week before the next the next meeting? So we have two meetings following one week and one the one week, that, that gives you three weeks, give or take. Is that enough time, ladies? Well, remember, I have to get the the report to Aaron a week before your meeting, so it actually gives me two weeks. Yeah. yeah well, if we had it halfway through the week, Sorry. you may as well start doing it this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine, so you're what, not, um, what, I'm just I just want to be clear what we're bringing back. We're bringing back proposals for how to spend that underspend across those three years, and possibly using some of it to bolster the 18 months of no funding for the. For the fully funded organisations, we are are we or are we not being asked to then discuss in the paper or pre present options for how much should be in that fund in its entirety from 2024 onwards? No. I would say actually yes. I think this is for me, Claire. This is about how we we this is this is a recurring question from officers. What are we going to do when this lot runs out? How are we going to fund this lot when it runs out? I actually think we can speculate to some degree, or officers can speculate to some degrees as to what is going to be required going forward to maintain the scheme after this three year period is over. I think that would be sensible. It also gives finance the, the opportunity to say, well, where the heck are we going to get that? OK, all right. <laughs> You might you might find that the recommendations coming out of the first two points influence the third any the third one yeah, anyway, and what indeed. you have in the budget from going from 2024 onwards. But um, we also need just need to cover off that point about inflationary uplifts because that then what's in the point in the pot from 2024 will be what's what it's been uplifted to potentially, yeah. and not yeah. going back to what it was at the beginning. 
if I think if, you, I mean. if this report can be done in that without having you have nervous breakdowns, the pair of you, then I think that would be it would be lovely if we could have it for that meeting. That's fine. So if we so the next meeting, whenever that is in November, end of November, if we're looking for the week before, the Friday before, um, for be a, an extraordinary meeting with the one agenda item, which will be this report in answer to today's meetings and the essentially option 2.1. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. According to my diary, that's the 20th of November. That's correct. Thank you. Yep. Oh, I was going to have my hair done then, but it's not okay. <laughs> it's usually my, my uh, excuse. <laughs> okay, that's, that's 20th of November. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make that meeting myself, but then I'm a substitute anyway. Well, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to, to, to dip in if you wish, Bill, even from remotely. Yeah. As I mean, as the, 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 the member for this department, it, you know, it's, it's, that's entirely up to you. I mean, I think really you've given your blessing for this to happen anyway. Yeah, I have. Uh, I mean, this process, so. uh, yeah, I've got a, a pension fund trustee meeting which tend to go on all day. So okay. it's unlikely I'll be able to contribute. OK, well, that's fine. Uh, John Williams, you've been very quiet um, and, and what have you. Uh, I take it you're in acceptance of everything that's been said and the advice we've had from Aaron. That's a thumbs up. Lovely. Thank you very much. OK. Um, where are we? <laughs> Lost. Was there anything in the service support grants paper yeah, that's the only thing we needed that's, that's to return bit, to? Yeah, that's, that's page I 35. think there might be a similar issue there just in terms of what is in that pot going forward. So are we talking the uplift down there again? It's it. So there were the, the paper. I mean, forgive me, Leslie, because this is your paper, but the paper was talking about um, the impacts of COVID essentially on on those organisations. But but it did bring given given the context of the conversation we've just had about generally what's in a pot um it did bring to light the questions around the the inflationary uplift and what what is in that pot um for next time when we do the next three years of funding bearing yeah. in mind that they've already started their three years then they won't the two won't be lined up no. service support grants and mobile warden schemes won't be lined up Do you want to add another paragraph then to your report for the three weeks of time? <laughs> I mean, really, I suppose this is where we are. This is this is looking into the crystal ball again, isn't it? Mm. It is. This is crystal ball uh, territory. It is, and, and and that's not to be uh, to belittle this process because this is where we've started you and we've moved on. So. We need we need to know. It's as simple as that, right? We, we we there is no two ways about it. We need to know what the impact of any decisions we make have made with regards to this, and then how these service grants, with the uplift on the inflationary uplift, etc., the impact on those uh, schemes. I'm actually thinking, unless we have an awful second wave of COVID. I've got a sneaking suspicion. I know I, I saw your face there, Sue, because I'm dreading it and all, right? But if if we if we don't, let's look on the bright side. Then I'm I'm reasonably confident that the impact isn't going to be as bad as perhaps we feared on the schemes themselves because they've adapted with the telephone and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is that element we can perhaps slightly push to one side a little. But it's the ongoing costs, as you say. I, I think if, unless members disagree, and I think they're nodding at the moment, um, would you mind adding that to your report? You Might as well just take all three, all three in in the same report and do it like that. That's fine. Is that okay, Leslie? So, 
in terms of options, you're for this paper, you're looking at option three. So giving consideration yeah. for the budget yeah. from April 22 onwards. Yeah. 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 Do apologise about the extra work on this, but I think it's so important um, that we have a as, as clear a, an idea of what the finances are going to have to be in, in a few years time, as your recommendations and your discussions already have said. So thank you ever so much. Uh, um, Joe, sorry, I'm, yes, I'm going to come back to the county again because we didn't resolve that one. I think it's something that we, if I may say here, uh, Leslie, please jump in if you wish. The, Leslie and I have talked about quite significantly um, over the past few months, especially around the mobile warden um, schemes that we've set up. Um, I think, Leslie, you you were saying that we kind of need a track record. We need to we need to show what we've done. Um, we need to prove that. Uh, where we are is something that and the, the savings that can be made with counties, uh, adult social services uh, budgets and what have you. Um, I think you said they've already got some uh, big data, haven't you, Leslie? Um, Age UK actually have got a statistician uh, uh, who's putting together some cost benefit analyses. So once we've got that, I think we can then um, build that into the conversation that we have for county just to show, just to demonstrate because they, they won't invest in anything unless we can demonstrate what the savings will be to them. So that that's really important. So we can't really step, we can't go any further forwards until we have that data. OK. Yeah, I mean, to give you an example, my father-in-law, I love him, is today going into care. Um, he's had four visits a day with the, the people, you know, the, the care people coming and what have you. The amount of money that has been spent is extortionate, but for the last two years he hasn't been in care. And I suppose a thousand pound a week for care, you can see how it ramps up. It is astonishing, and that's probably one of the cheaper numbers that I've been quoted. So these are these are the um, the examples we have. I mean, Sue has been involved with this from her nursing and heaven knows what for a long time. So. We've had these conversations ourselves, so so on a number of occasions over the last ten years. So it's, it's we, we have the data anecdotally, if you like, Catherine. I'm just thinking about whether there's anything we can do until we've got the data, and we have in the past done things, not necessarily on this issue, but we have had a committee or the chair of a committee or a lead member write to county just to let them know what we're doing at the moment and the considerations that we're having to make in terms of budgets and things. You can't you can't give them necessarily the data on savings to adult social care um, or to the early help team uh, as well. But we we could just say this this is a priority for us as a council. Um, we would hope that it would be for you at some point in the future, and have a have a a letter written that that just explains our position. That's that's, that's another another you know, and as, a, as an interim point on the way to having something else that demonstrates okay. um, support. Bill, Bill and John, what do you feel about that? I, I, um, I think I want to, yeah. The thing about the County Council is that it, it, it's got to be a, a lower priority, I think, because they're not going to act quickly. Um, if it's going to be, if you're going to be putting more work on Catherine and, and, and Leslie, I think it's something that we should put on the, I'll put on hold for a while um, and return to it when they've got more time. That would be my view. Yeah, I think given the financial situation of the county council, the chances of us getting any success with this at the moment are not going to be very great. Can I pick up on some of these points made about the MTFS and all this? I mean, we don't know what's going to be happening in 2024. I don't know what's going to be happening next year. We haven't had a we haven't had the financial settlement yet from the government. Um, that's not going to happen until later this month. So to look forward to 2024. Sorry, Joe, but you know it's a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to be happening then. 
we could well find ourselves in a in a freeze. The government could freeze our our um, our expenditure. Um, so everything we can't give any assurances beyond what we've already got at the moment. Uh, and to do anything to and to give any assurances would be, I'm sorry, would 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 be would be wrong, um, because we don't know what's going to happen after. Um, next year, I say we don't know what's going to happen next year because we haven't had a financial settlement yet. Um, the government may well come back um, next year after COVID um, with the need to um, find enormous amounts of savings across the board. Um, you know, and in those cases, we could, I can't guarantee that these schemes could be continuing in 2024. I'm very sorry, but. That's the state we, we find ourselves in. So we can only do what we know now. And I hear what you're saying. And I, I you know, support the option 2.1. But to look beyond that would be, um, I can't give any, any guarantees. Nobody could give any guarantees. What's going to be happening in two or three years time? It, you know, John, so it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I can't for, give any guarantees, Joe. No, no, no. It, it, it wasn't for um, any kind of guarantees. It was more, if you like, an internal, um, internal aid or tool to say, actually, if all was well and we get our finances from. No, government, you can't. I, you can't base an MTFS on that. You have to base the MTFS on what you know currently. You know, not not looking into a crystal ball and thinking what money we might have in two or three years time because we just don't know. OK. Fair enough. Save you a bit of work there then. <laughs> John, you got your hand up. Oh. Right then, any any more comments to be made, members? Peter's gone, I think. Can I just add one thing? This is a, a completely off the wall question. We call them mobile wardens. Age UK calls them community wardens. Um, to me, community wardens means more. I mean, you know, um, I just wonder why we why we still call them. It's, it's a historic thing, perhaps. Um, but community wardens just, you know, the, the, the name tells people much more about what they're about than mobile wardens. I just wonder whether or not we should consider changing it. I dare say that term mobile wardens comes from something that either Care Network or one of the original schemes used mm. because the the mobile the warden is literally mobile. mobile and goes round and knocks on doors and and yeah. helps people. So uh, yeah, we can we can we can switch our terminology and start calling them that if that's what that, we'd that, like that to do. Put personally, but I mean, I, I don't just let me sway you. I mean, there are other people here who may have an, have an opinion. I don't want to start an argument, but <laughs> you, you, you won't you won't start an argument. But I mean, you know, Melbourne Mobile Warden Scheme is a registered charity and that's its registered name. So mm, yeah. th there are a whole host of um, issues to, to change, change names. I mean, we can refer to it as Community Warden Scheme. It's not yeah. a big deal. We can have a funding scheme for Community Wardens that Mobile yeah. Warden Schemes registered with that name registered, can apply yeah, to it. It's yeah, exactly, not, yeah. it's not it's yeah. I, I, yeah. I agree. The, I've always questioned the Mobile Warden Scheme bit. So. I often think as well it gets confused with the sheltered housing mobile wardens yeah. that people t think that you're offering. So to yeah. have a community warden, yeah, would make sense. What, what does Sue think? She's been around for a year or two. What, the year or two? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose my, my, um, I suppose my angst has always been about the warden bit. You know, it's a bit like prison wardens and mm. things, and and I'm not sure I like that term. So I, I go with you Bill, in in liking community wardens better, but I'd love to get rid of the warden bit. Community carers, would that be better? Oh, no. No, no. no. Carer, carer. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's okay. okay, okay, okay. I'm just showing my ignorance now. You're not. You're not. It's just that we're just talking about I it do, all the time. I do wonder whether if you start calling it a community something, so let's say it's community warden scheme, you might then open it up to people who've who've become quite active under the under COVID. Yeah. COVID, yeah. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And those yeah. groups will Maybe then start all... because then good good neighbor schemes, those kinds of things. So Maybe it's the wrong you know. time to change. Yes. Okay. We definitely well, want to, to involve those people <laughs> from the from COVID. You know, they've they've set themselves up and become very active. We want to galvanize their uh, yeah. you know, make the most of their enthusiasm, but not necessarily within this scheme. I don't know. I'm I'm bit, Bill, I think you're being too greedy. You're wanting both more money and a new name. <laughs> I'll shut up now. I'll go, I'll go for broke, Bill, that's what I say. OK, <laughs> right then, ladies and gents, thank you very much. I think there's nothing else now. Um, apologies to officers for the extra work you've been given. Um, we're looking like we're going to have the meeting the, the week before, as Sue said, be on the 20th of November, where hopefully the report can come to us for this, for all the bits we've been talking about now. And then we'll have the normal meeting, scheduled meeting on the 27th, I'm assuming. Thank you. Um, Joe, that- might, I, might I just say, uh, ask um, Aaron if he could give a uh, ex- um, warning to Claire Delderfield about that? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. In that case, then, thank you very much, one and all. Thank you to Liam in the background there, minding the store. Um, and we'll see you on the 20th of November. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye. Good week. Thank you. Thank you. The members of the public, we're now going to end the live stream. Thank you. Yeah, Liam, if you could just end the live stream now. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs>